Hello, Reject Nation! It's Greg Alba here. And it's John here. So, uh, we're gonna continue our Parts of the Caribbean uh, film franchise retro review series this week. Continuing with Part 2, Dead Man's Chest. Okay, okay. So, John, how many times did you see this movie? Uh, I saw it a couple times in the theaters. And then I want to see I've seen uh, I want to say I've seen it like three or four times. Yeah, we do these retro reviews a little bit different. It's more just free form flowing thoughts on the film as opposed to you know breaking it down. It's structure. Uh, yeah. you know, just what's as, the pertinent? Yeah, part? just as a heads up. It's more about experience than it is uh, you know thought provoking type of talking here. Chances are you've seen it already. Yeah, yeah. And it's been if, many years. <laughs> if it was decision making time, it's long since passed. <laughs> I, I saw this film twice in the theaters. And I remember the first time I watched it, I did not like it. I really didn't oh, like no, it. No. And it was one of those movies where I remember one day I was I was like taking a very I used to walk everywhere at that time. I was still a teenager then, so I used to just walk like miles to get places or take the bus. And I was, I was like thinking about the film. And then I started thinking like, yeah, there's some cool stuff in it. It was pretty cool. It might be better than the first one, actually. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, I watched it again the second time. I was like, now i got to just find out if I really like the film or not. And I loved it the second time I watched it. And every, every time I watch it ever since then, I really do enjoy the film a lot. And the reason I'm bringing that up is because I, I feel like this is one of those films that it gets a lot, it's, it's supposedly like when the franchise began, it's decline. But I think it's... At, I, at I, part two? <laughs> I, can, I can totally see, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I can totally see it. Um, uh, I, I don't, yeah, I don't think it's as bad as a lot of people have made it out to be. You know, I even looked at the Rotten Tomatoes score, like 54%, and I'm like, nah, it's way better than a 54. And in, in some ways, I think there are aspects of it that are better than the first. I don't think overall, as an overall film, it's as strong as the first one. But I think in a lot, in m most ways, I'd say the majority, it's just as good as the first one. At least in terms of, of values and imagination and, and adventure, I, I yeah. think you're right. I mean, there are a lot of... I feel like the Pirates 2 is a little more intermittent than the first one. Like, there are times where I'm like, oh yeah, this is a bit long. Or like, I, I see why we gotta do this, yeah. but you know, these plot points are getting kind of stretched out. Uh, but I remember liking this movie pretty much the first time I saw it. I mean, I liked yeah. it, um, and then I came to appreciate more stuff later. I thought it was a bit long. I think that was the only complaint I had yeah. the first time, was that it was, you know, a bit... Well, especially that finale. The finale of the film is yeah. very long, because they go to the island where they finally retrieve Davy Jones' the chest that they've been looking yeah. for this whole movie. Then they break into a three-man sword fight, which is very entertaining, and then Davy Jones' people show up on the island, and then Kieran Knightley's fighting with the other two henchmen dudes, and, uh, uh, and and then and then after that, then they're on the ship where Davy Jones is attacking them with uh, what's the ship called? The Flying Dutchman. The Flying Dutchman, and then the and then they get up a little bit further away, so then the Kraken starts attacking them. It's just a super long finale. However, as it was playing out, whenever I caught myself either feeling a little exhausted or a tad bit bored or drained by the fact that there's just non-stop action for like the last 30 40 minutes of the film i i found myself also thinking well where else would it go like this actually makes sense that it would all be playing out like this yeah i feel like with the first two movies the plotting usually seems pretty sensical and there are times where yeah it's like there are times where it is a bit bloated but at the same time you understand where the character like that yeah. when they're all sword fighting each other at the same time they're all just having yeah. this like dick measuring contest yeah. about the chest like yeah i get that like i i get how those yeah. characters they all that. had the right motives to fight each other i thought yeah if you nothing ever really felt clunky i mean like it's it's you know you're jumping back in to this world and the, the movie does start a lot faster and it is kind of long because there's a lot of stuff it has to achieve and i think those things kind of turn people off maybe well, but well one thing i re you know what i thought of when, when the movie started i thought of uh, bbs because <laughs> Because you know how when we saw the trailers for BBS, everyone thought like, oh, they're, they're addressing the concern, the issue of all the destruction that yeah. happened. And if you watch our uh, Curse of the Black Pearl review, what we talked about was uh, the ending of the first one, <laughs> how it, it was rather weak and it didn't make much sense that they would just let the let Jack Sparrow go and Orlando Bloom's off the hook. Yeah, <laughs> and Commodore's yeah. like, all right, I understand you. Whatever. And I like how the opening of the film starts off with this new character, Beckett, 
arresting Keira Knightley and Orlando Bloom and has a warrant out for the uh, the Commodore's the arrest Commodore, of, yeah. as well for that specific ending that happened in part one because then the whole plot really revolves, it kicks off with that and it's very pertinent to the, to the rest of the journey. And I appreciated the fact that, you know, the writers were like, well, you know, there's something kind of off with the ending of part <laughs> one and it, it greatly affects and leads into this whole journey of part two. And it's, it's things like that that I really appreciated about the film. And I thought the cinematography, I, I mean, the first one's already shot brilliantly, but the cinematography here is, A, it's, it's a lot darker. It just looks darker from beginning to end. It, it, like, it starts off in the pouring, thunderous rain. And, well, and, and it starts off, like, with, with the remnants of, like, yeah. a nice party, fine china. Yeah. Like, clearly this is a somber occasion that wasn't supposed to go this way. I think what we said was, after, now that we're older and we've seen more of this director's work, we said that... This is more of a Gore Verbinski film than the first one. Yeah, I mean, the, he gets to go all out yeah. with this movie, the especially one, with the designs, man. Yeah, because I, I thought, like, the first half of this movie, I actually enjoy more than the last half. And, and the first half of this movie, what I liked about it was, while the first half was still darker than the entirety of the first movie, um, it still had humor throughout it. It was really the last half of this film where a lot of the humor is just not really present for majority of the last half of the film. Yeah, it which, starts which takes shit. the energy down. That's where I thought the, yeah. the fun goes down because even though it's an action-packed, brilliantly choreographed and staged finale, because even like the three-man sword fight that had some pretty cool shit. And like it's as, yeah. as ridiculous and cheesy as it is when they're in that giant wheelbarrow. It's still really cool yeah, the way they whatever. assembled that. Yeah. 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 And a lot of it looked real, too. Yeah. At times, you're like, is that stuntmen? <laughs> Actually, like, rolling. At times, you could tell it's CGI, but at times, it looks like it's stuntmen. Yeah. And uh, it's, it's, but it also, that's the thing, though. It always made sense to me why it went darker, because Davy Jones is, is talked about throughout the film, but you know, uh, Bill Nye, he doesn't come into the film until rather midpoint or something. Like, yeah, yeah it dude, takes a while. He's the beginning of the last half of the film. Yeah. And by the time he shows up, that's when the film gets a lot darker. But it also made sense because I'm like, yeah, this is it's the dark romantic version of Davy Jones. And it made sense that it would kind of stay dark. And the only one really cracking jokes is Jack Sparrow at times. Well, because, I mean, Davy Jones is like, that's that's your Hades for pirates, you know? Like, yeah, this yeah, is yeah. your, this is welcome to hell, you know? Yeah. Like, uh, so, uh, yeah, like, I, I, I don't uh, fault this movie at all for getting darker, necessarily. I, I mean, like it, though. Yeah, 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 yeah I, I like, like it. Yeah. And I like a lot of their ideas, and like I said, the design, like his whole, like everything aboard the Flying Dutchman is kind of great to me. Like, the, yeah. the whole idea that his crew are amassed of these damned guys who are, yeah, who are, who are, like, yeah. melded with sea creatures yeah. and stuff, like... Especially taking, like, a timeless idea like that and putting a visual on it. I thought they did a, a oh, tremendous totally. job of that because it would be easy to to mess that up or to go too big. And even though they're all effects, I feel like, yeah, no, like, that's a cool idea. It's still like, engrossing, and it's not CGI distracting. Because when we were they watching... They CG what they need to, it feels like, in, yeah. in these movies. But in terms of, like, the close-ups on all the designs and the characters, especially Davy Jones, and I felt... That's probably why the cinematography just was darker. Not, a, I mean, a yeah for storytelling purposes, but b to help balance out the visual effects because a lot of the times when you have like really high octane CGI, what tends to help is darkening the cinematography a little bit. The the yeah. lighting balance always. I noticed that with a lot of movies, especially sequels that have CGI in it. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it's knowing knowing where to set things and ha and how to light. Not necessarily just making them darker, right, but right. how to light them and, and yeah. where to put the focus and stuff. And yeah, like, because you'll see the like those shots toward the end of the crack. Like, when the Kraken mouth comes up, you're like, yeah. ah. It's a little mist. Yes, this is a bright day. Yeah, yeah, it's a little, yeah. it looks a little like the mist. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So, so I do think that, yeah, keeping it but, dark. Is but like, I remember at the time in the theaters, that shit was pretty scary. That well, was, yeah, that was scared. Like in the theaters, like especially when you finally see the Kraken's mouth and it roars, that was terrifying in the theaters. Well, and I imagine it probably read better because when we were watching the first one, there were times when we would go, "Oh, uh, that that is CG." And, yeah, and like there were things that I didn't realize the first time. So I feel like CG has come far enough that what may have looked good back then, yeah. just now you can tell. You know, but Davy Jones, Davy the, the Jones. work on Bill Knight. Yeah. Uh, John and I were talking when the film was done. We were like, man, at times it, 
it like the close ups looked like practical effects. Yeah. I, I was I was sold that it was a it hybrid of practical great. and CGI. And then we, we looked out photos and it's all CGI, but I I, I thought mean, they may have done some hybrid stuff. Like I only found photos from two scenes, so like, you know, if somebody else knows, you know, perhaps you yeah. correct us. But yeah, it, regardless, it looks, it looks amazing. It to looks, this day it looks good. <laughs> especially yeah, especially the stuff like right up in his yeah, face. All the like, face stuff, yeah. Looks moist. It looks like like a silicone appliance. Like, yeah, honestly. Like it looks really great. And that's these are very textural movies, and I feel like that's something that, that they usually get right. You know? And I thought in terms of expanding, because the, the thing with this movie is it gets a lot more into the mystical aspects mm. than, and, and I know we're going to do the third one, which you still have yet to see. I have not and, seen past uh, that'll this That'll be an interesting point. review, because I'm kind of not looking forward to watching that one, honestly. Yeah. <laughs> um, but, the, but, but in the third one, when it gets incredibly mystical, here they introduce those mystical elements even a lot more uh, than the first one. And I, I, I'm telling you, like this is one of those sequels that it, it works better around the second time I think you watch it, yeah, the probably. second or third time, whatever. And all those elements I really did enjoy in here because, like, all the stuff with the Flying Dutchman was great. I really like all the stuff with, uh, you know, like expand expanding on things that when you watch the first, because because when we watched the first one, I was aware of all the plot element changes in the second one, which make me wonder how tied in it was. For example, Jack Jack Sparrow's compass. And, uh, and the first one, how it doesn't point north, but the first one never establishes that it points to what anything. his heart desires. Yeah. And and then when you look back at the first one, you're I watch it and I go, oh, is that what it's doing? Because <laughs> I see when I'm watching scenes, I'm thinking, is was that already part of its world, or yeah. did they add this in the second one because there was no real explanation for why it didn't point north or whatever? But I love that element Either too. Either one's fascinating. Either one's Honestly. fascinating. Yeah. <laughs> you know? And and uh, I really like the element of him of how Jack Sparrow just has no idea what he wants. So he becomes reliant on. I'm going to give this to Orlando Bloom for a second. I'm going <laughs> to hand this off to Kira Knightley for a second. Being clever. Yeah. Well, and, well, and he'll and he works them up, you know, in yeah. order to play on what they want, so the compass yeah. will really kick in. And and that was something that I picked up a lot more this time was. Those more, I guess, you know, some of those plot elements that maybe went over my head or, or got lost in the frenzy of, oh my god, new part of this yeah, movie. Yeah. Like, yeah, I thought that was actually particularly cool, that plot point, when he's, like, winding up Elizabeth to get the compass yeah. to work. I'm like, that's clever. No, he's a great... Uh, I thought the writing of Jack Sparrow was still really good. Granted, mm -hmm. um, the, the best way to say it is what it says in the, in the consensus score, Rotten Tomatoes, actually was the unpredictability of Jack Sparrow is, is not as strong here. However, he's still really good in the movie. Jack Sparrow is still the best, most entertaining part and has the funny, it has some really funny moments in the film. Yeah, definitely. I love when he goes to see, uh, who's the character that Naomi Harris plays? Uh, Tia Dama. When he goes to see Tia Dama, yeah. he's, he's like, he shoots the monkey. Yeah. <laughs> An undead monkey. Yeah. <laughs> That's what yeah. I, I do. I get uh, uh, why people receive this movie differently is is watching them back to back. Yeah, I realize that the difference to me in this is that there is a lot of humor and there are some moments that still made me like really you know, laugh, gut yeah. bust. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but the first the first movie, the, the, I feel like the difference here is that the first movie has a much more even distribution of like here's a fun character yeah. moment, here's some jokes, here's a fight, here's you know, and it Whoa. kind of oscillates through those. Whereas in this one, there's like a joke here. And then we're going to go on for a while, and there's maybe a joke yeah, there, exactly. you know, like... So at times, even the wacky stuff, like the cartoony kind of humor... Because in the first one, any cartoony kind of humor is totally works. Mm -hmm. Here, there are times where it seems a bit off, especially in the last half when it comes in. There are a couple times. Because the movie is a much more somber, more serious tone throughout, that when the wacky, the cartoony kind of humor happens, it's a, I'm a little bit thrown off. But rewatching this again, even some of the wacky, there were wacky stuff that I didn't enjoy. The whole, I love when they go all out with like the, the pirates world, like the pirates, not the mystical stuff, but just the pirate stuff. Mm -hmm. Like when they're in Tortuga and then the bar fight breaks out. The first couple times I've seen that scene, I don't, I didn't like it. I honestly thought it, it felt misplaced and out of tone. Yeah. But then watching it this time, I really liked that scene. I appreciated it because it, it fits with what's going on at that time. Well, yeah, and also just the little details. Like that one guy gets whacked and then immediately turns yeah. and just punches the nearest <laughs> yeah. person. Like, 
<laughs> Which is, you know, like these these movies, especially for me, thrive on little details like yeah. that. And this film is still full of those. Oh, you totally. Know, like, and, and that's something that I appreciate. And going back to uh, to Dama, to, to Naomi Harris, I love her she's so great. much she's great. as that character. She's like kind of like Jack Sparrow in the sense that she's weirdly sexy. <laughs> Even yeah. in this movie, yeah. Yeah, well, she's got that thick accent. And, yeah. and actually, like, the first time I saw it, I think I just plum didn't pick it up. And then this time I was like, ah, I understand exactly how this accent works now. So, like, I can yeah. really understand what you're saying. But uh, I really liked uh, the addition of that character. And I, I totally. anytime you go to, like, a creepy bayou, mm. it's good for me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> You know, and I'm uh, going back to Zortuga. I really like who the who's the actor that plays uh, the Commodore, Jack Davenport Jack Davin. of TV's Smash. Ah, okay, Marilyn, Marilyn well, Monroe. Well, Jack Davenport. Well, he's a decent character in the first one. He's really the character. He's, he's just a, not rooting for to get really just kind of an inconvenience and you should just understand what's going on <laughs> yeah he's yeah. playing that that yeah. stuck up royal guy i think he doesn't i think he doesn't i thought he did really good for what the role was in the first one i love how they change his character in this mm -hmm. he's got the facial hair he's down in the dumps you know he hates his life he's not he, so proper he's resentful. Anymore. yeah he's gritty mm -hmm. i i like mm -hmm. the turn he has you know where he because his plot motivation makes sense to steal the papers and also, uh, you know, return the heart so he can get back his life. All that was making a lot of sense to me, and I really like his character in this one more than I did the first one. It's, it, the evolution of that I liked a lot. He was definitely one of the surprises for me the first yeah. time, and, and I just enjoyed him that much more this time. Because yeah. when he comes back, I was like, ooh, yeah. fun. And, yeah. I'm, and I'm always happy for actors like that when they get to reprise a role but do something real different with yeah. it, like have a chance to... to spread their wings a little bit in a yeah. sequel or something like that. Before I forget this point, I I just really love Bill Nye as Davy Jones. I oh, he's love him. fantastic. Yeah, he's, he's a great choice. He, he's a different type of villain because he's not the fun villain kind he's of the way Barbosa. how Bar <laughs> he's not Barbosa because Barbosa and Jack have a very specific dynamic and chemistry and protagonist antagonist uh, dynamic happening in the first one. In this one, he is evil and cunning and he, he, he has every right to chew up the scenery because of his designs and everything. Um, but his performance is great. He's, he's really scary. And he, yeah. he is the kind of villain where you're like, how will you beat this guy? <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah. Or, or even if you can see how it's like the stakes still seem enormous and oh, totally. a lot of things have to go right. Yeah, yeah, you know? absolutely. And yeah, he's true. Like down to his little mannerisms that all come through the CG... If there was makeup through the makeup, like he's you said chewing up the scenery, but but ironically, I God feel like not. he's I should, not. I think like, I take that back. Yeah, he's not. He's I feel he's like on the he, right level. Because I've seen Bill Nye he show up and stuff where I'm like, yeah, you know, he's like an I Frankenstein, and I was like, yeah, you yeah. didn't need to be here, and like you really are chewing yeah, on the, the scenery. Underworld movies. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And, and like this is like yeah, he's a big crazy looking thing, but like. Man, his performance made it that much more believable. I can't imagine yeah. anybody else doing what he did yeah. there, you know. And uh, and getting to see that that character is really gratifying, totally. and and is a memorable. You got especially now Marvel movies, and everyone's always talking about like, oh, villains like Barbosa, great villain. Davy Jones, awesome villain. Yeah. Like like a good step up from there. Yeah, I feel yeah. like. Especially all, if you got to do bigger and scarier for a second villain, he totally tops it. Yeah, and that's one of the things that I think the second movie like really just just nails. Yeah, yeah. Like no no matter you can you can always go around and be like oh you know maybe the first one's the best but like I would still want the second one. Oh for yeah, all that stuff. Oh yeah, you know, for totally. all that extra stuff. The thing is like even if it yeah even if it is a bit more somber, a bit more dark, uh, a bit you know lengthier, you got to invest harder in this movie. Yeah. There's still so many great moments and so many great details and so many great ideas and designs yeah. and like there's a lot of great stuff going on. Stellan Skarsgård. Stellan Scar. Speaking of Marvel, Stellan Skarsgård and <laughs> uh, Bootstrap Bill. That relationship, uh, man, I fell for him. I yeah. felt for him. The guy just has like the worst luck, and he's always trying to do the right thing for his son. When they play that gambling game. And then he bets his life to, to be up his for eternity, it. Yeah, yeah, he bets his etern the eternity to be on the Flying Dutchman. Yeah. And then he learns from Orlando Bloom, you fool. <laughs> Why would you do that? <laughs> um, 
But he, he learns, oh, you just wanted to know where the key was. That, like, heartbreak in his eyes. This, this terrible, like, loss and just trying to do the right thing for his son. Because you brought up a thing about Orlando Bloom that wasn't as charming as the first one. He just and, didn't engage me. As and that, I don't know That's why. more on plot for me. Because the plot yeah. they give him is he's just man on a mission in this one. Well, and his dialogue isn't as interesting. And we already know who yeah. he is, you know. I, I it's feel more like... in the writing, I think, for him. Because I felt all the other layers were still there. Yeah. And he's I... brought to a darker place, too. He finds that his dad's still alive, being held captive. And I kind of like the arrogant side that comes out of him in the finale of, I just got to kill uh, Davy Jones because I got to rescue my dad. And he's like, and he doesn't like Jack anymore because <laughs> yeah, yeah. he knows Jack just tried uh, trading his life. <laughs> I, I love, I love that dynamic because even not even Kara Knightley can distract him from his goal. <laughs> See, yeah. I, I liked, oddly enough, I like, I like pretty much everybody in this movie. Kara Knightley and Orlando Bloom left less of an impression on me in this movie. I feel like they got better as time went on. I think Orlando Bloom is probably best when he's in those scenes with. Stellan Skarsgård, you know, like, yeah. the, the father-son scenes are my favorite That's where he gets real character stuff to do. Yeah, and then um, everything after that, like, I, I, I get it. You although, know, I you know, like... I, I, like, I like when he's becoming, uh, when, he, when he does his best to lead the pirate ship. You know, when Jack leaves the Black Pearl for a while and he becomes, like, leader of taking down the Kraken. I thought that, I thought he did a really good job there. I like that uh, evolution yeah. of him becoming the leader of the pirates yeah. in, in that specific moment. And even, you know, I even like that cheesy ass moment where Jack shows up at the end and then uses the shotgun to to shoot the barrels to get the Kraken oh, to go yeah. away. You know, like, I'm like, yeah, good for you, Jack. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah I yeah. like that moment a lot. <laughs> and I didn't like it the first few times I saw it when Kira Knightley makes out with Jack at the end. I, I never really liked that moment. Um, but this time around, I thought, uh, watching the whole film again, I thought it built up to that reasonably well. They keep hinting in it that the compass keeps pointing to Jack. And then just from knowing the first one, how drawn a pirate she is, and Jack is the most authentic of the pirates, it, it made sense to me this time around that she was drawn to Jack. See, I, would, I guess I would have to watch it again because I had that same thing of, like, when they brought in that whole thing of, of uh, that whole plot point about Elizabeth suddenly being attracted to Jack, it, it, it started to come together a little bit for me later. I started to understand what it was for, but... When it first popped up, even this time, I was like, what? <laughs> like, oh, really? Like, they, her and Will seem like they're really all about each other. They did before. Well, yeah, oh, there's like, nothing in the first movie that really hints to that. There isn't. There isn't. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and just jumping in here, I guess, like, that's something that's kind of a, a drawback to me about jumping in so fast is that the adventure kind of begins, and then by the time it gets to that, I'm like, oh, wait, but where, where are you at with Will? Yeah. How is this happening? And then I do think at least as my recollection goes from from watching it yesterday that i really liked how they played the moment when she kisses him and locks him up and all that i think yeah. what that's for is good i got a little muddy on what the actual context was like if her attraction to him stopped a long time ago and now she's just using this as a strategy or if she's still wondering or maybe she's not still wondering the compass is pointing all over the I th place i thought it was a goodbye kiss for jack the, this time watching it around because because okay. even as she's talking to him and has him handcuffed she doesn't step away and start giving some speech she's like still really close to him and looks tempted to eat, to kiss him even more so in that moment i thought because and it seems like she was regretting like she was feeling bad like this is the only way to stop the crack and i don't want to do this but um, i have to i guess i didn't get any affection in that look i got this is what we have to do. It wants you. This is really? what I need to do. I didn't get like a oh uh, like I, I get the I got the history. I got the like oh we like this has to suck somehow because I'm sending you ostensibly to your death. You know in this yeah. horrible way. You see, I felt that way the first few times, but this time around, I I, I actually under, I, I don't know. There's something in the body language of how close she was to his face. How she always looked like she was about to kiss him some more, and um, I, I felt the regret. And then she's like crying at the end about it. I believe that stuff. I just don't... Again, it's like I don't know if I buy that it comes from like a... I love you. I don't think she loves him. Or, or yeah. you know, like I want to be with you maybe. Yeah. Like I'm sad this this romance might be... I didn't read any romance in it. But I did read history. I did read like we've been, we've been risking our lives together, you know, yeah. under dubious circumstances. But like, yeah, I mean, I, I definitely bought that she would be 
broken up about it, you know, later, especially when they're all yeah. together and and everyone's feeling a little icky in the well, hut at the end. You well, know? regardless, that whole sequence I thought was shot really well when they're all getting away from the Pearl and yeah. Jack's trying to get out, <laughs> and then he decides to just meet his fate head on. Yeah. Like, I like how he gets his hat back. Yeah. <laughs> like yeah, those yeah. little touches. You're like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah his hat. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> he doesn't have the hat the whole movie because <laughs> the Kraken took it earlier. Um, and also that, that ending with Barbosa coming at the end, that's exciting to me. And I love that he finally ate his fucking apple. <laughs> yeah, I wanted to juicy bite Because the whole movie's too, about you know? the apple. He just wants to eat a damn apple, and he eats it. And I love it. It's like, oh, he's alive. He's yeah. alive. You know, he's not just, he's not a, uh, an undead being again. He's yeah. alive. And so that's, I, I really do like that touch. And even Gore Verbinski's slight touch, because when, when you watch the movie again, uh, when when you go to Naomi Harris's place, there is like a a one second shot where you see the monkey, like tugging on its leg or something. The body's laying down, and yeah, you just see, you the, see feet. You see feet. And so who's you're, you're, in there? They're alluding that he's there, but I don't think the first time you watch it, they're like, oh, it's definitely Barbosa. <laughs> you know? No, in yeah. fact, I I forgot uh, how they orchestrated that. So at first, when I saw his feet, I'm like, oh, is it about to happen already? <laughs> yeah. I forgot that they left it until the very end, and, and yeah, that was a. Uh, Man, like, that's still a fun cliffhanger. Yeah. Like, it, I'm still really happy. Makes that. me want to watch the third one. <laughs> yeah. yeah, like, that last shot, you know, is so awesome. He comes <laughs> down the stairs, you know, what's what's happened? What's yeah. become of my ship? You yeah. Know? Like, and, and, oh, it's such a great button. Even if it, even if at the time you might be like, what is happening? He died. Yeah. Like, you know. Yeah. Um, I know it's it's a great it's a and I, and I think that this is a good chapter in the in the franchise. I think it's definitely. I think the first two are damn good movies. I would say this is a, a great movie. I, I think it's I, really cool. I yeah. think it's great. I, I'm, I'm going to say that. And on the internet, that's the most popular opinion about the second one. I think it's a great movie. Jack Sparrow's really good. Yes, it's not as strong. It's it's lengthy. It kind of drags on at times. And uh, some, some it's not as fun overall. But what I think, what, what am I lacking, like, you know, Hollywood blockbuster fun, it makes up for in dark spectacle at times. Yeah, and, and unbridled imagination. The thing is, again... Oh, it's full of imagination. Dis yeah. Despite some of those things that, that you can... That are, you know, drawbacks for some people that make the movie a little less magical and a little less just effortlessly enjoyable as the first one. And the, and the first one even, you know, has some draggy yeah. bits, you know. I feel like this movie, not having seen the later sequels, I definitely don't think you, you can just cast it off because there is... Even if it doesn't come together to be as cohesive as a whole as the first one, there's still tons of, of awesome yeah. filmmaking, awesome spectacle, awesome directions that they decided to take the story. And it seems like they put a lot of thought into this. And I there's so much to appreciate, even if it's not 100%. And, and the only other complaint I have mm -hmm. is how in the first like 40 minutes of the film, huh. every few minutes... There's a thing that happens where it's like, remember this funny thing from the, from first, the first one? Movie? Oh, yeah. Remember how this was funny in the first one? Remember uh, the callback to the first she one? Slapped Orlando Bloom this time. Yeah, she slapped Orlando Bloom. Bloom. Jonathan Bloom. Price got the candle off the wall. Oh. That's what Orlando Bloom did. <laughs> <laughs> gotta love, gotta love sequel nods. <laughs> yeah, sequel nods are great. Yeah, <laughs> go back. Yeah, They're I always there. So I get this a uh, fifty Gregs. Um, I, I give it. Five Bill Nighy's, five Naomi Harris's, and and three Orlando Blooms. That's pretty high for that's us. Pretty high. That's, that's all like very 13. high. Rate. If you know our rating system, that's very high. Yeah, it's it's only a fourteen point rating system. Yeah. So mine was you know, thirteen points. Mine must have been about thirteen point five. Yeah. Yeah, you know, your rating system's like out of fifty five points. So like fifty out of fifty five. Holy. Holy shit. shit. This is great. All right, guys. Well, we're gonna watch Pirates of the Caribbean three. Oh boy. You know, I'm, I'm I'm hoping that this will probably be my fourth time watching this movie. I'm, really? I'm hoping because every time you watch one and two, you're like, oh, we watch part three. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe I, it'll get better. Yeah, yeah that's, that's the exact feeling I have right now. Like, oh man, I just every time I watch it, it's just a dreadful experience. Nah, I just, dude. I just can't stand it the fifth time it's gonna be the time let's hope so it finally clicks because right. i can't dude i'm i'm not gonna go in to hate it i'm actually hoping i go in like 
I'm hoping to like because they're like I said with part two, there were scenes that I didn't like prior to watching it last night and then watching it now. I'm like, you know, I actually really like this scene a lot. The benefit of time. Yeah. The benefit of time, yeah. Hey, because uh, at least for me, like I said, it's I've seen at least the first two films multiple times, but this is the first time in at least several years that I've actually sat down and watched yeah. them. So some stuff does does sneak up on you. All right, guys. Well, you can subscribe to The Real Rejects. Click that notification bell. John's dat John Humphrey on Twitter and Instagram. Social media manager at Blumhouse.com. Go check out our exclusive rewards at Patreon. Do yourself a favor and hop on board the Patreon community. Even for just a dollar, we got a lot to offer. Believe it or not. I'm talking exclusive videos just for you folks out there. Much love to everyone. Goodbye. <laughs>